it's unusual to start with the journey home but I've had an amazing day today and I hope that as you sit back and watch you'll enjoy it too as we continue the walk on Wheeled Way through the glorious East Sussex countryside. We started in Kent, we've crossed the border to East Sussex and today we go through the Ashdown Forest. So it's a great journey, I hope you enjoy it. Well, I've just got off the bus. It's Monday the 28th of March. I'm back at the Dorset Arms to continue the wheeled way walk. For me, this is day five of it. But of course, it's been spread out over months, so it's not been that onerous. It was a lovely sunny afternoon when I walked across this field and left the trail a few weeks ago. But today, it's actually quite misty to start with. I don't know if the mist is going to clear or whether we're going to be stuck with it all day. But it's certainly going to be um, a challenging walk. It's just over 13 miles. And I'm not sure how far I'm going to get. I think the mist is lifting a bit. I've just entered the, the wooded section, which looks as if it's going to last for quite a long time. <laughs> and when I consulted the map, this was the last bit of down before a very long stretch of up. So I think I may just have a drink when I get to the bottom. Well, I've just had a cup of tea and what a lovely path through the forest this is. Wonderful. I think the recent storm has uh, wreaked havoc in this bit of the forest. Look at the size of that beech tree that's come down. Wow, absolutely enormous. I've emerged from that bit of the forest into the more open moorland, which we tend to associate with what is called the Ashdown Forest. This is the trail I've come up and uh, headed in this direction. I've always called this sort of scenery Enid Blyton country because in her children's book she often mentions heather, which we've got growing here, and gorse, which is growing over here. Picking up the course of an old Roman road here. I 
don't know what that sound was. Maybe there's a modern road nearby. I'm not sure if this is the highest part on this part of the trail. It's 729 feet above sea level. Which is quite high for the south of England. I think it's amazing to think that this trackway it's been in use for 2,000 years at least because the Romans had a road here and who knows if they took over an early Romano-British uh, track. I guess most people would associate this sort of scenery with heathers and pines more with Scotland than East Sussex. When the trail provides a seat and it's after 12 o'clock, it's time for a lunch break, even if it is a bit early, because there may not be any more seats for miles. Ashdown Forest. I'm cooling my feet. Having a salmon and cream cheese sandwich, I'm looking at this wonderful view. I can hear the larks, but I don't know if the microphone will pick it up over the sound of that plane. This is Camp Hill. And the path goes off in that direction. There's the Trig Point. And that looks like the next wave lock. This was an abrupt change of landscape immediately after Camp Hill. Since having COVID, I can't smell much, but I can detect the wonderful coconutty smell of the gorse as the sun warms it up. Mmm, lovely. Here's another ancient beech tree down. Look at the size of that root. I don't think this is going to pass its MOT test. Looks as if it may not have been driven for a while. Oh dear, in concentrating on this broad path, and photographing that old car, I missed the narrow way. Well, here's a mystery. 
there's water dripping here but I can't see where it's coming from Well, after having a chat to that other hiker, I feel I need to press on. We've just had a long, uh, whoops. <laughs> oh, just had a long going down part. So you know what that means. The next bit is gonna be a long going up part. Maybe this should be called the yo-yo trail because if you're not going down, you're going up. Thankfully at the moment, we're going down. You can see this water is very rich in iron. Look at the colour of it. They don't call this the high wield for nothing. We've got to go right up there. <laughs> Going up this hill. It's not a question of slow down and smell the coffee, but slow down and appreciate the wood anemones. I've just come through Five Ash Green and sat in the bus shelter and had a, oh, a cup of coffee, a banana, a couple of chocolate biscuits. Oh, oh. I Anyway, I was very, very tempted there because it was showing you could get a bus to Brighton from there, a bus to Lewis, and there was a bus to Tunbridge Wells in eight minutes. And it would just have been so easy to have thought, oh, I've had enough for today. But I am going to press on and hopefully do these last five miles that I'd set myself. It's amazing the number of World War II gun emplacements you can still see in the south of England. There's really been very little road walking today. But we've got a short bit now. This is the parish church at Buxted. I once preached at a wedding there. And on the war memorial is the uh, name of Queen Elizabeth's brother who died in the First World War. That looks like a redwood.
the River Uck. Well, I think it's called the Uck. This used to be a beautiful double track railway between Lewis and Tunbridge Wells. And now it's just a stub end finishing at Uckfield. Oh, look at all those steps I've got to go up. This should be the last turn of direction of the day. According to the map, I've got about 700 yards left, but because most of the roads in Sussex are on the tops of hills and ridges, it's all uphill. Just when you thought the last bit was gonna be on a nice smooth track, the trail springs another surprise. It's surprise after surprise. And another surprise. Haven't seen a vineyard for a while on this trail. Well, I aim to get to this road for five o'clock. And I've actually just made it for five. Oh, what a rush that last bit was. Now I've got to find Pat.